Happy New Year and happy holidays to one and all joining us tonight. Uh, thanks for the invite. Uh, said per perfect weather here in Deep South Texas tonight. I love it. How cool! How cold or how cool is it down there? Yes, I already fixed the. Uh, thank you, Cesar. I fixed the audio problem. I keep on forgetting. I, I keep on forgetting to turn on my microphone in OBS. So welcome everybody. You just heard uh, a Ray Silva, a South Texas Border Sports talk. So how cold is it down there right now? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a nice balmy sixty-five degrees. Ooh, sixty-five degrees. I think here in, in uh, Houston it's sixty-one at this moment. Uh, but like I said, you know, it's been a while since we've had you on the show. Welcome back, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. And also with and also with us tonight, you know him very well. Uh, he's one one of the more consistent uh, co-hosts uh, on the show. The one and only Jacob Young. Jacob, how are you, brother? Doing all right. Not doing too bad. Ready to talk about soccer. It should be pretty epic. This should be very 
much filled with a lot of hot takes. Oh, I will tell you. Oh, that. yes, yes. And like I said before, I realized that my microphone was uh, muted. 2020 started off with a bang, not only in, in world events, uh, like I said, it's for another it's more serious podcast, but also, you know, it started with a bang when it came to RGV UFC related news. And just these last couple of days, we've had uh, some really, really surprising news that we're going to be talking about t- about today. But uh, more importantly, we also want to take the time right now to thank uh, our sponsors, uh, Roughneck Scarves and uh, Natural Beauty Natural Beauty Spa for all of their all of their help in, in uh, with this with this show. Uh, now, first things first, and I think we'll go ahead and start with the positives because. I think the way this this year has started, I think we deserve a little bit of positivity in, in our news. So, the positives. Uh, yesterday, RGVFC around four o'clock in the afternoon, they announced two new signings for the 2020 season uh, of RGVFC. We've got a young kid, 19 year old striker from UTRGV, whose name is Cal Edwards. And of course, we've got a Brazilian winger, a 26-year-old Brazilian winger named Tyberson. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm specifically really, really stoked about Cal Edwards. Not much about Tyberson. And I'll get I'll get into more discussion uh, a little bit why, a little bit in a little bit. But let's go ahead and uh, Jacob, what were your thoughts, your first initial thoughts when you heard about these two new players? Well, simple. I think you said it pretty well. Yeah, I was kind of stoked, of course, UTRGV player uh, getting signed Kyle Edwards for sure because, well, he's got a lot of growing to do as well as, well, potential basically. And that's always a great thing when you – know that a player has potential and can be well taken the correct way especially under the wing of jerson echeverry because we know how he treats his players and he treats his players pretty well he wants them to do as good as possible as well as possible and all that now of course just like you kind of mentioned about tyberson it is true i wasn't that stoked about tyberson why we've seen it happen with the way that well, it's true. Matt Jordan does the uh, about wanted to say recruiting, but he does the scouting is South America because they're cheap players. And well, they you can find a gym in South America. Don't get me wrong, especially in Brazil. But this we're not even talking about a player that's from Rio de Janeiro. We're not talking about a player that's from, well, big places like a No, we're talking about a player from a small club who, well, they're at the bottom table in the Brazilian league. And not to mention, we've seen those players come over to the U S and have either underperformed or been way too aggressive. And what I mean by aggressive is they just, well, they're almost reckless and they kind of don't learn from it. Some of them don't learn from it. Others can, but a lot of South Americans, especially Brazilians for just the way that they play, it's tough to get adjusted because of how aggressive it is over in South America. When you come over to the U S yes, it is aggressive. The aggression is still there, but it's a lot less tone. It's just, yeah, it's a lot less. So yeah, I'm just, I don't know about, uh, Tyberson, but for sure, Kyle Edwards, very stoked about him. So want to take the time right now, uh, to say hi to everybody in the chat. Cesar, thank you for, for joining us, uh, today. Uh, good luck in your uh, in your work training. Uh, and then my dad, he says, glad to see you guys again. Hello from Tilden, Texas. And I also want to take the time to welcome uh, to the channel uh, for thank you for subscribing. Michael Reyes, uh, he is a member of the Stampede. So uh, thank you so much for for your support. Welcome to welcome to Down in the Valley's YouTube channel and uh, ho- hope to see you uh, in this uh, upcoming upcoming season, man. So. Ray, you've been yes. a lot more, I, I can assume that you've been a lot more informed. You've seen a lot more of Kyle Edwards uh, in these past, I believe, two seasons that he's been with UTRGV Vaqueros. 
uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, so how can you describe yes. uh, Cal Edwards, his play style? Cal Edwards, uh, Cal Edwards is a, he's a big kid. He has a lot of pace, a lot of speed into him. Uh, he, he likes to play off the ball a lot, lot uh, likes to, to play in space a lot. Uh, he, uh, a, a, what I like to call a natural uh, goal scorer, he's uh, one of those kids that, uh, that is hungry to just play and to, um, and to just be forward and up front and try to um, uh, provide a lot of speed for the team. So it looks like to me, you mentioned that he's he has a lot more speed, and it it looks like at least with this uh, with this signing, it seems like maybe there might be a possibility that some tactics on Jerson Echeverry's squad are gonna change compared to the uh, tw the 2019 season. You know, we we used to see we having uh, Carlos Carlos Small or Michael Salazar who tend to be a lot more physical. To be a, a lot more like, um, you know, getting the you know some sort of spacing, creating spaces to to shoot to shoot the ball. Whereas it seems like Kyle Edwards might be more uh, of a like you said a, a speedster. Uh, is that the same vibe that that you guys are getting off of this, or do you, or do you think that he is? some sort of the same quality the same the same uh, uh yeah the same characteristics excuse me of carlos or uh michael hello right and i think G he's give me here. a second give me a second all right. all right uh all right kyle reminds me a little bit more of the uh Carlos small type of character or not type of character but uh, if, if I had to compare him to have similar traits to only because of his size and he brings a little bit more of, of bursting speed going up front uh, he he likes to play a little bit uh, off the ball and, tr and try to create defensive back lines mm -hmm. that oh, I Go ahead. That's how I would probably best describe Kyle Edwards. So, at UTRGV, did they tend to play him at a one-striker lineup or a two-striker lineup? Two-striker stri uh, two lineup, but they would adjust to a single-striker lineup where they would constantly just give him the ball uh, moving forward. They would just like lump passes going forward, trying to find space. Mm -hmm. So it seems. So it seems like at times we might we might see a lot a lot more of uh, Jerson Echeverry building up of what we left off with in uh, 2019 as far as tactics are concerned, even if it means with mm -hmm. with different uh, players compared to last season. Uh, you know, you mentioned you know at the end we were playing. In 2019, at the end, the last couple what like five games or more, we were playing with a two striker lineup with uh, Carlos and uh, Michael Salazar up up on top, and it it was working real well. The connection with with both players, you know, was it was it was a really good connection that it just showed up at the end. It's no fluke that the Toros finished the 2019 season with five uh uh with the last five games being undefeated, you know, because the team showed some really good improvement at, at the end of the season. And it looks like Jerson Echeverry wants to continue that. And I really am appreciative of that. Jacob? Yeah, I'd have to agree with that, with what you just said, for sure. It's, well, yeah, pretty, I'm pretty appreciative of that the way that Tristan's going to kind of treat it for sure as a two striker position. But remember, we haven't necessarily seen Kyle play just yet in a USL setting. And what I'm kind of meaning about that is, well, just what will it look like when he plays with RGVFC come February 8th? We're 
some type around there because of course will he be adjusted is kind of where i'm getting at to because ncaa compared to usl i know we've talked about it a lot it's different the game is just different it we we've also talked about it with jerson the way that just the game is with a lot of law passes to well now in the usl you just have to be smart and be physical too can he be i'm ready even said it he's fast and can be physical but now of course put some more weight on yourself and just don't get knocked down easily and things of that sense of course when you're up front it's going to be well it's going to be difficult to do exactly that but i think we can see if he gets up to speed quickly in the usl with all that physicality and stuff like it then we can see a great front line and that's perfect we can work with this offense and if we kind of have to just slow down maybe work with the defense throughout the season that's perfect but if we can score goals because this is the key of us putting the ball on target putting the ball in the back of the net then we can slow down that talk about working with that defense <clears throat> Ray it seemed you wanted to say something uh, right now yeah I mean just to add to what Jacob was saying uh, and even you even brought it up I, I think Kyle Edwards would function best with a two striker lineup because even when his star uh, his starting striker uh, went down with a knock on William McKeel over at UTRGV often suffered just a, uh, just a little bit with having to play um, play Kyle Edwards just to up uh, with him um, as a as a single lone striker and try to uh, have more offensive wingers into the UTRGV lineup. Of course, it's two different uh, settings of play of environment, but I think Edwards' game is better suited with the two-striker uh, lineup. So, you know, if you guys haven't uh, seen or read the article that I posted uh, yesterday uh, at DITVpodcast.com, which is our new website, by the way, um, be sure to check it out. In here, there were some, there's uh, just a couple of uh, things about uh, Kyle Edwards, you know, first of all, you know, he does have some uh, experience at the international stage. He has 15 appearances in the senior St. Vincent and Grenadines national team. Uh, so he, he does have that under his belt. Uh, he did play uh, in USL League 2 with the Brazos Valley Cavalry uh, last summer. Uh, he scored 15 goals and, excuse me, 13 appearances making him the co-winner of the uh, the Golden Boot. And, and so, you know, he comes in with, you know, with the, with these, you know, with these stats, you know, at uh, not only at UTRGV uh, with uh, 21 career goals with the Vaqueros and then 15 goals and 13 appearances with uh, Brazos Valley Cavalry. And you can't help but think that maybe this kid might be the real deal uh, coming into the USL Championship. Certainly, I mean, his experience with uh, with USL League Two uh, will give him that uh, that little bit of an advantage because he's uh, kind of already familiar with the Dynamo system, and and even then, I mean, dirt, like that time off before student athletes reported back uh, he he would hit the gym pretty hard to uh, continue to continue his strength and conditioning so it, it's an, it's a nice sign for uh, for the toros to ha to have that kid with with also some international experience mm -hmm. under his belt Jacob well Ray brings up a good point right there that of course dedication is what I kind of got out from what he said there. And that's perfect because, well, guess who else had some really great dedication trying to get, you know, a starting spot onto the field last year? Brad Dunwell. So if he's a kid that has that type of mentality, trying to make sure that he is A fit, be ready to go on the field and see putting on weight and doing all this 
amazing things that of course you need to do as a student athlete and now as a professional athlete or well just about a professional athlete then that is exactly that type of ethic that RGVFC needs and I bring the need word in because well I'm sorry but we've seen attitude problems with RGVFC in general Yes, of course, it can go from just a striker. We've seen what Carlos Small did one year ago at the start of the season from having to be benched and then coming back with a little bit more maturity. So, if anything, that is something that we do need is more maturity and more dedication like that, especially at practice. So, that's going to be great. I think that's... I think that's a good point that you're that you're trying to make, uh, Jacob, and you you know, trying to add a little bit to Ray's point of uh, Kyle Edwards' uh, dedication uh, that he showed not only on the field but you know but outside the field and prepping himself uh, come game day. Uh, I think it's I think it's ne I think it's necessary. I think for the most part, like most of the players that we've had have been very dedicated, have been very professional in the way that, you know, whether they treat themselves. Uh, so if we can get more more players, we can continue with the stride of getting players that are dedicated that are uh, to, to this team uh, and try to look for not only doing good for RGV, but maybe in the future trying to convince Matt Jordan and Tab Ramos that they deserve a shot in the first team then then we wel we welcome that and we want this to not only be five games in and then disappear for a lot a lot more games we can't expect you to to be like at the top all the time but at least we want to show we want uh we want you as players to show the efforts you know not giving up uh, always fighting for the ball <laughs> yes we might get we might lose some games but at least we're going to die with our heads held up high. That kind of mentality is that we is that we want to see from this team. I mean, one hundred percent agree. Right. Um. Now, also, I just wanted to give my input on the on the uh, Brazilian player. Sure. He uh, viewing some of the, some some highlight reels, me a little bit of uh, of Michael Salazar, and Jacob, you may be onto something that South American players are can be a, a bit more aggressive only because the style of play uh, in which they play and down there can be uh, uh, very physical and, and very demanding, but. I, I think I, I can kind of see him as a Michael Salazar type of player where he's always playing on the wings, but I can kind of see him uh, becoming uh, another goal scorer for the team and eventually losing him to a a standard MLS contract if he ca if he catches a fire early on. See, but here here's the thing, Ray, and I'm going to go into this why – Maybe Tyberson kind of, I kind of feel meh about that signing. Well, I do understand that the Brazil Dao is a lot more competitive. The talent ceiling is a lot higher um, in Brazil compared to the United States. You know, he's coming in from um, Caixas do Sul, which is technically in the Brazilian third division. Okay. It's fine. I mean, we're in. I mean, we're in the second. We're in the second division of the U.S. But what worries me the most is that Tyberson, since he became, since he joined uh, Internacional de, de Porto Alegre, he's been loaned out to multiple teams throughout his career, never really gaining foot on any of these teams until he was released. Either he was released or his t contract ran out in 2018. He was picked up by Veranopolis, a sport club, 
late 2018, and then in April leaves to go to Caixas do Sul, and now he's uh, and now it's January, and he's going to be back with uh, and he's going to be now with RGVFC. Does that tendency worry you guys about Tyberson? Well, I say uh, yes and no, but Jacob, go ahead. Okay, I mean, you know, from what I got from him is he's on Centro Sportivo, which is technically in the first division. But either way, it yeah, it does worry you when it goes from transfer to transfer to transfer, team to team to team, and the only difference is only. As, and I say this a lot, too. It's only time will tell. But I think the time has also told its story already that if he can't keep a, if he can't stay on a club in Brazil, even though, of course, those clubs are poor as can be because they can barely go out of country, basically, to play or out of well South America just to play in any type of uh, club cup. But it's just, yeah, it is it is worrisome just a bit that he's gone from club to club to club. Now, Ray brought up a good point. He does look like he can score goals, but that's scoring goals in Brazil. We were super excited about Carlos Small when we saw what he was capable of when he scored a lot of goals. Now, I'm not saying Carlos Small is bad in any way. It's just, of course, now we've seen he's got an attitude problem, and that's also where I'm also coming from is just a little bit skeptic on that because we'll look at all those players that have gone to Houston, another great example, that were from basically not not even Central America, but from South America, and look at where it's gotten them. Very close to being kicked out of the club half the time. Only difference is the Colombian native, uh, Mara Manotas stays on the team because he's actually dedicated. So we can get those types of gems, which is great. Hopefully that happens. Now, w- with regards to this t- Tiverson signing, I mean, yeah, I mean, we, we may not know what's what's the full case uh, with him with his other uh, clubs in Brazil. And yes, he, he's been long times, haven't been able to ca- uh, but catch on with an act but I, I I just feel like uh, getting outside of Brazil uh, or ch- or a change of wins for him might might suit him pretty well and might make him realize like hey this might be the end of my uh, professional career if I don't shape up here pretty much mm-hmm. I mean it's kind of like a last chance uh or like a last chance project type of thing. So kind of, so maybe like a second win for him. Yeah, like a second win. Yes. Yeah, that that would be a little bit more appropriate. It's a, it's a second win for him. I mean, ho- hopefully he can he can be able to do great things for us, and then uh, let's see who knows what could happen from 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 there. Now. We also have to keep in mind that this player, Tyberson, was brought in, I guess you might want to consider him as the veteran presence or one of the veteran presence potentially. Why is it? Why is my microphone clipping? Anyways, um, potentially be the, uh, the veteran presence of this very young team. Tyberson is 26, so he's not that old. You know, but he's not young compared to the team age average that they usually tend to have or what the Dynamo kind of wants to have as an idea for this team. Got to say that I makes me feel old. Um, so one of the things that Nick Kalba mentioned on the press release, he says, Tyberson is explosive and dynamic in the final third. Uh, I'll give uh, hopefully get uh, your your thoughts if if that's exactly what you saw from his highlights. Uh, he has the ability to play a variety of attacking roles. We have been trapping tracking him for some time and feel his formation and experience at Atlético Paranaense and Internacional will be a huge benefit to our young team. 
thoughts on that ring um you you hit a couple of uh of nails here uh veteran presence i mean i i I think you're on this that because a lot of these kids and what i mean by kids is that we have uh nico lemoyne who's 18 19 uh you've got uh uh, you've got isidro uh, martinez also on the roster and even kyle edwards to try to teach these guys uh, like uh how to just continue to mold mold yourselves uh professionally Kevin. and and he's and he's one of them and i feel like he's uh, going to be one of the guys uh to you know kind of lead the way and it's something that the team uh, hasn't had if if you can recall i mean if it's if it wasn't a, like a midfielder it was a defender having that vet, veteran of presence Mm-hmm. Uh, now, with Tyberson, uh, he's a player that's played up front. That's a that uh, that can a score or score a goal or two, and even help create a lot of uh, scoring chances. And I just hope that he uh, does pan out. Jacob. <clears throat> well, I mean, you could be onto something for there, but I want to make a quick little bold prediction. Kyle Adams going to be our uh, captain, because if I had to guess, he from what I can tell from his Instagram is he's coming back. I don't and know, that's man. Always I don't, I, a good thing. I, he, he, I mean, Connor Donovan's not coming back. If you saw his last post, he said, Happy birthday, Connor Donovan. I'll miss playing with you. So I had to guess he's staying I don't because know. of that that comment right there. I don't know. That, that, that's that seems, uh, I don't think that post. Uh, says anything whether he's staying or he's going. I mean, they're not going to be playing in the same team more than likely. So, yes, he's going to miss playing with him because he's not going to be in the same team anymore. But that doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to be come back for RGV. He might be going to Real Monarchs. He might be going to San Antonio. Oh, God. Uh, He might be going to El Paso or Hartford Athletic, wherever. But I don't necessarily mean or, or think that that means oh Kyle Adams is, is going to stay I would love it but I'm just trying to I'm just trying to keep it real uh, at at this moment with, with a... I, I mean I, I get you for sure but that's my prediction Kyle Adams comes back and he becomes captain and so that's even better that's a big leader because we know how Kyle Adams can act, especially on the field. He can act as a leader. He definitely deserves the captaincy wherever he goes, especially once he, if he doesn't stay on RGV, he definitely can't just to me feels like leadership material. And so my point being, well, if he comes back, we have another veteran that can really help mold this team of course yes we haven't talked about the defense that much but that's another great point right here he can even help out this offense we all know that well we'll have a young keeper behind us probably ben willis or someone like that so it's going to be well just interesting to say so the least of how this team really molds together because we were talking about this offense and well the offensive structure just like you said ray and edson is pretty good in the sense that well they can motivate each other and help grow this team especially this year we all know we'll probably be sitting around 11th position which is okay especially in a rebuilding year yes we want to make playoffs but guess what toros fans we ain't doing it for sure we're just going to sit in 11th position and be okay because rebuilding and that's always going to be key here and this mold of a team will probably see their stride, if I had to say, late April, maybe early April, late March. I'd get mad right now, but you speak so many truths in that regard. It's always, it's, I mean, it's always like that. Right now, we're like, we've only had seven players, you know, coming back from last season's roster. Most of them are young kids. If you guys, let me just go ahead and uh, freshen up your minds. So the seven players that we have coming back are f- uh, f- from last season. Forward, Nico Lemoyne. Uh, forward, Juan Carlos Obregón, who came in like at the end of the season. 
Uh, obviously, Chelo, Chelin, Isidro Martinez is, is coming back. Midfielder Kevin Rodriguez, who uh, stayed with uh, uh, Malik Foster's uh, spot once he went back to uh, Costa Rica. Uh, you've got defender Andrew Samuels, uh, defender Robert Coronado, and of course, goalkeeper Ben Willis. Those are the seven uh the seven players that are coming back, you know, and besides Coronado and Samuels and Isidro, who were a lot more consistent on this lineup, you know, you've got four of the of the returners, you know, being having the lesser amount of minutes, and now you're gonna be on top of that, you're gonna be piling in a bunch of new players. So you have a point in that it may take a while for the Toros to take this stride. Now, will this team be good enough on paper to overcome that uh, that latency in in this 2020 season? We don't know yet. We only had nine players right now, so the uh, I think the coin is still up in the air to see if this team will be able to make playoffs after so many years of just being spoiler at the end of the season. And speaking about spoiler real quick, you hear that, Chewy? We coming for you. Y'all aren't making playoffs again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, the South Texas Derby is going to be a lot more fun this this season. <laughs> um, Ray, uh, anything else you want to uh, add before we continue with the next topic? In the famous words of Gerson Echeverry, no, no comment. comment. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right, so let's move on to the let's move on to the next topic. By Mostly, the way, we got to work on having him back on. Uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll, we'll we'll keep we'll keep on working working on that. Uh, hopefully we can get in touch with him uh, before February eighth, which is the match against the Houston Dynamo at HEB Park. By the way, yeah, that's that's a bit of news uh, that as well. If if you didn't. Uh, Notice it, RGV will be hosting the Houston Dynamo in preseason on February 8th uh, at HGB Park. Still no word yet if it's going to be a public event, a season ticket members only event, or just a closed doors event. Once we get that information, we will gladly uh, let you all know on our social media, on our website, dntvpodcast.com, and uh, may, or maybe even uh, on a show uh, as well. But yes, we would like to have uh, Coach Gerson Echeverry back, although I'm pretty sure uh, he'd be knocking uh, some of us over the head <laughs> if, he do- if he does come on. So RCN7 sa- yeah, says... I-, I, can already, I can already see the two potential targets, and I'll just uh, make the popcorn by the buckets. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> he went there, Jacob. He went there. <laughs> I, uh, well, I mean, hey... Well, Work called at the end of the season. I got a job, and hey, I was making money, so I'm happy. (laughs) Dang, got cut. Uh, So RCN7 says, by the way, thank you for your comment. He says, chemistry will have to develop very quick with all the new players. Agreed. Uh, How quick? It's going to depend on a lot of factors. But the fact that we're going to be mostly filled with young guys I think that's gonna it's gonna take a while, like it usually has been. I think usually by ha- by the middle of the season, that's when things start rolling for RGVFC. The quick question is, how good is this team to overcome that deficit come the the middle of the season? So moving on to the next topic, we talked about arrivals in RGVFC. We've talked about uh, the the players that are staying this season uh, from last season. Now let's talk about departures there's been a couple of confirmed departures uh so far from rgvfc um as far as players that were cut or were not negotiated a new contract that have found a new team one of those is uh today's birthday boy uh connor donovan connor donovan has officially signed with north carolina fc he will be back in his home state in his home region uh, to play for North Carolina FC, but in the Eastern in the Eastern Conference, 
Uh, I think it's a good move for him. A little off the poster back home. It's it sucks since he was a player that kind of took that role of being the captain uh, with this team, that veteran presence uh, out there in the back, and you know not gonna have him anymore. It kind of hurts, uh, but we wish him we wish him well. Uh, guys, what were your thought? What are your thoughts on that? Connor Donovan's free. Um, he, he's free. He's back home. I think that's a fantastic move, especially given the fact that what Connor Donovan is, well, he's one of the more mature players. He is a veteran player for sure. And he had some bad luck, especially last year with the injuries and all of that, which is 100% understandable. Wish he, Houston would have given him more time, but in the end, it was time for him to really just make a make a call and say what is better for me and better for him is definitely moving back to his home state playing for North Carolina FC which let me tell you North Carolina FC that whole group from the NWSL team to well their USL team is pretty good they're going to in my opinion they will make a run in the playoffs for sure I think they had that type of talent, and just adding Connor Donovan in with that uh, veteranicity is perfect. Uh, Connor Donovan, um, I, li- I kind of like that move by North Carolina FC. Um, it-, it was a team that struggled a, a little bit then. Uh, I think the the Connor Donovan move makes a lot of sense for him. He's going back home, going back to the state, where they're gonna like fully appreciate uh, the services that he can bring on to a team because he does bring a lot of a uh, USL uh, championship experience, and it's a and it's also basically his home his home club team, you know. So it's kind kind of a good uh, good move for him. I think, you know, the fact that he has, you know, some sort of MLS experience as well, I think it's going to be a huge boost for North Carolina. North Carolina, like Ray, like Jacob mentioned uh, a little while ago, it's a very serious organization. They have a plan. They've stuck to it. You know, they moved from NASL to USL where they knew it was going to be a lot more uh, stable for the organization to grow. Um, they've have they have plans for a new stadium. They've added an NWSL team that is two times champions of NWSL, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. North Carolina yeah, Courage. North Carolina Courage. And not and now you know you're bringing in these players. Looking, I think the USL is still kind of elusive. But they're working on building a championship team. And the fact that a championship fighting team like North Carolina FC looked on looked at Connor Donovan's eyes and said, This player is good enough to give me that boost to get closer to the championship really means a lot on, on the talent level of Connor Donovan, if I say so myself. Yeah, and w- I mean, and it's just something that uh, their head coach, who was a former U.S. Uh, n- an interim coach for the U.S. national team, uh, saw the potential that Connor Donovan can bring to them. So it it makes moves, it makes sense in in, in all the aspects. It kind of uh, checks off all the uh, check marks that North Carolina FC may may have been looking for in a veteran defender. I def I can definitely agree with that, and uh, you know I wish him I really wish him the best uh, and good luck uh, in this upcoming season. It's so much easier to say that when you know you're not gonna be when you're not gonna be playing against that specific team because um, they're in the Eastern Conference. <laughs> but this upcoming departure that I'm just gonna mention, and everybody knows because everybody's still kind of heard about it. Chuy Enriquez drops the orange. No. No, you're 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 skipping one. Eric Bird. Of course, let's go with Eric that one Bird. first. Uh, Eric Bird has been officially 
Um, and thank you so much, Ray. I totally, I feel bad for the bird man that I forgot, but yes, Eric Bird was officially, officially, I can't even speak today, jeez. Eric Bird was officially revealed as FC Tulsa's, formerly known as the Tulsa Roughnecks, uh, newest signing for the upcoming season from the Houston Dynamo. Yeah. This is a player that at the that was, and I said it on Twitter, this player was pretty much one of the primary reasons why RGVFC ended last season the way that they did. You know, oh, for sure. you know his, his dedication, you know, his hustle and his talent, you know, opened up so much in the <clears throat> when it came to creating chances uh, for Chu, for Chewy, for Carlos Small, for Michael Salazar, and helping Kevin Rodriguez kind of gain his footing as well up on the wing, as well. It really helped helped out a lot. Now you know we realize that the Dynamo guess didn't think he was MLS material, so he was uh, not renewed for another MLS contract, and uh, FC Tulsa just swooped him up. And uh, I think he's gonna be. It's gonna be for a team that's also looking to rebuild, literally from the ground, or not literally, but really close to being literally from the ground up. You know, you're talking about new crest, new identity. Almost everything is new about this team. You know, I think it's a good. I think it's a really good signing for mm -hmm. FC Tulsa. Oh no, this is a great signing for FC Tulsa, and you're right to bring this up as well. Eric Bird, the Birdman, was the reason why RGVFC ended the season the way that they did on that high. And it, that's fantastic. So look at it this way. Eric Bird finally coming into his prime, breaking that shell, breaking basically, in my opinion, that MLS shell as well, which is always key. But then, of course, you have Houston Dynamo who thinks, oh, no, you're still not going to play well in – MLS, we don't necessarily have a contract or anything for you, which I guess have also thought, eh, well, at the, well, no, we had to have at that point, but doesn't matter. Houston, Matt Jordan did not think that he was a part, shouldn't, should have been a part of this team. Okay. Well, guess what, Houston, you just gave up yourself a great player and Tulsa Roughnecks scoop him up. I don't care that they're supposed to be called FC Tulsa. I'm not going to call them that. Mascots are for, for the win. And I can tell you that big time because I'm about to get into a rant about that as well. But my point here is that Eric Bird, a spectacular player, found his footing and should find his footing in the MLS very shortly, especially if he comes off of this hot, basically, basically summer to autumn season in that in the USL, he could probably find himself in the MLS is all I'm trying to say here. And yes, FC Tulsa is it now? Why? You're ruining the sport of American soccer. And what I mean by that is American sports always have mascots. Quit taking your mascots away. FC or Sporting KC, Go back to the KC Wizards, please. Tulsa, go back to Tulsa Roughnecks, please. Look at Raul Salt, Salt Lake. Okay, that's a very boring name, but they could be, I mean, Monarchs or whatever. So, I mean, just a quick little rant about that. Go back to mascots, please. But Eric Bird, great sign by Tulsa. Very smart for them to scoop him up. He deserves better, and I think he's getting it. Agree to disagree on that uh, uh, on that uh, mascot uh, point of view, but that's the beauty of uh, uh, soccer. Everybody has their different opinions about that. But Ray, um, your thoughts on this uh, signing by Tulsa? You, you know, it might be a little unknown fact, but uh, Tulsa has a very small uh, intra loan program with the Chicago Fire. And I would not be surprised if, if Eric Bird finds his form early and often with Tulsa to him get a another crack at an MLS team uh, such as Chicago. I would not be surprised uh, because we all we've seen what he's been 
uh, capable of when fully healthy. And it, it was just a shame that when the time that he was down here, he was just getting his his minutes and getting himself back into form, and he finished in in, in top form and even scoring a, a for us. So uh, it's just something that uh, kind of um, it, it was kind of see him go, but uh, he he may have found himself in a good spot in Tulsa. I'm... And I, by the way, I, I I'm in in favor of uh, of uh, Tulsa making that beautiful logo change. I love how they adopted the state bird into it. Well played. Boom, Tulsa birds, Tulsa whatever their state bird is. What is their state bird? I, let me let me. What is it? Hold on. Is, is it the city bird? <laughs> oh, or the Jeebus. State bird. State bird. The scissor-tailed flycatcher. Yes. Tulsa scissor tail flycatchers. That's a pretty epic mascot name. <laughs> I actually think it is. <laughs> Tulsa's a super flycatcher. Super catcher fly, I'm not even going to attempt that anymore. <laughs> um, so, I guess, so I guess it's pretty much a unanimous decision that it was a great pickup by Tulsa. And a big, what the hell are you thinking uh, to the Houston Dynamo, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So now let's move on to the next one. Like I said, this one hurts a lot. Um, Shui Enriquez decided to ditch the orange and put on the black and silver of San Antonio FC. To be fair, it's red, black, and silver. They do have some red. True, true that. True that. But this one hurts because I don't know about you guys, either those of us that are watching right now, Ray and uh, and Jacob. The Chuy Enriquez was on the road to becoming the the club's image, the mm -hmm. club's legend, the fan favorite. He was already a fan favorite, but he was on the verge of becoming more than that. Yeah. And now, because the Houston Dynamo decided not to renew him for a third year, San Antonio being San Antonio, the trolls that they are, because that's what they are, they are trolls <laughs> for RGVFC fans. Now, I don't know how effective they've been when it comes to on-the-pitch results, but when it comes to trollability, their experts are trolling us down here uh, in the Rio Grande Valley. They come and swoop up Chuy, and now he is going to be their winger come the 2020 season. I guess I'll start this one off, and this is going to be fun. Fantastic job by San Antonio FC for making a great call. Now, of course, this all will go all the way back and revert back to Matt Jordan in Houston land, in his own little Houston land that is, well, Houston Dynamo. And just to also start it up, look at how many players have gone that deserved at least one more year. Todd Wharton, another great example. He's with the Portland Timbers, too. and He signed with St. Louis. Yes. Signed with St. Louis. You're getting my point here. He's a great player. He was a great player for RGVFC. Now, of course, we can talk about how many players San Antonio have signed. But in reality, whose fault is it? Houston's. It is Matt Jordan's fault for not seeing, I guess, a bigger picture of, I don't want more on my bench. I don't want to spend more. Guess what, man, Jordan? You kind of have to. Why do we always go to this side of close to the end of the season and you have all these players banged up for no reason whatsoever and then you all miss the playoffs because of that and blame a head coach? Now, to be fair, Wilmer Cabrera at the end of the season, sorry, I'm going to throw you under the bus. Actually, I don't care. 
he stunk. He had no identity with the club anymore. That club felt or he that team basically fell apart with, of course, all that Romel Kyoto crap. But at that same time, once again, why did we miss the playoffs a year before that? Injuries. We didn't have enough backup because we didn't pull from RGV. So it goes back to this. We're not or Houston. I'm sorry, I'm using we a lot, but Houston is not using RGVFC the correct way possible. Keep Chuy Enriquez for a reason. Sign him to a dang MLS contract. Don't play games with him like he's your girlfriend or he's your boyfriend because that's kind of how they're doing this is just basically playing games with every single player who's trying to sign for an MLS contract. It is stupid. It is ridiculous. It's moronic. It's frustrating to the death. We could sit here all night and just talk about this one thing, but Chewy isn't the only one. We can go back to none other than the great British player of Charlie Ward. He said it best in the interview when Ray interviewed him. And, well, guess what? When we go back to thank you for BGN written and Carson A. Merck for writing this story, but when we look back at his quotes, Chewy Enriquez's quotes from that It's kind of the exact same thing, just spoken a little differently. How they basically just, yeah, they played with it. They were saying, oh, you'll be able to go to the first team. Eh, no, we want you back, but you'll have to stay in RGB. Of course, Trudy's like, screw that. Because guess what? If Trudy Enriquez really wanted to, he could go back to Liga MX and actually, guess what? Being on a first team. That is my opinion completely, and you can say yes or no on that, but, I mean, I don't care. I think, honestly, Chuy Enriquez could be playing in the first team in Mexico if he really, really wanted to. But, of course, he wants to be in MLS and maybe, of course, in Premier League in, you know, in years to come, and that's a be- better place, apparently, from Chuy Enriquez's eyes, which, yes, checkmate right there, Liga MX. MLS is better to some players, which is cool. So my point to this all is Houston Dynamo, get your act together and sign the dang players. And Chuy Enriquez is better off with San Antonio FC at the moment. We'll see him probably move a year later to a different USL team that will give him a fair opportunity to, guess what, go to the dang MLS and get an MLS contract. So it's as simple as as that of course easier said than done but you got yourself stupid not management well not managers but just stupid scouts that don't see the full picture in players that deserve an mls contract rant over tell me how you really feel no i definitely agree with all of this and here's some here's the kicker here's the kicker so to enriquez he is arguably the best or he was arguably the best player rgv had these last two years agree or disagree agree okay let's go back to 2018 2018 open cup houston dynamo versus ntx rayados they called up i believe seven up to nine rgv players for that match including Chuy Enriquez, including Matias Aldivar, including that other winger, that, that Colombian winger that, uh, see, I forgot, Montano, John Montano, okay? Everybody got a chance to play that match, even John Montano. <laughs> the only one who didn't, Chuy Enriquez. Now, going to 28, 2019, now, remember who was the, the, the coach for for the Houston Dynamo in 2018? Good old Wilmer Cabrera. Okay. 2019. You got, a ma- you got a couple of matches. The first one is against Austin Bolt. Okay? They called up, if I'm not mistaken, they called up Kyle Adams. They called up uh, Carlos. No, Carlos was, uh, at the last minute didn't show up. Uh, Michael Salazar was already signed with an MLS contract. They called in. They called up less players, but they called up a couple. Uh, Kyle Isidro. 
Kyle and Isidro were two of them. Correct. Yes. Now that I remember, yes. But guess who wasn't called up? Mm. Chuy Enriquez. So you can really say that the Dynamo gave Chuy no opportunity to show himself mm -hmm. with the first team in a match. So Chuy is not that far off when he says that the Dynamo misled him when they signed him. Now, if anybody has other data or has a different view on this, let me know. Put it up in the comments. Call us on the phone line, 956-622-5977. But the way I see it is, the Open Cup was the best opportunity to, for Chewy to showcase. And the fact that Wilmer Cabrera did not give him the opportunity to do so really says a lot about how Wilmer treated him uh, throughout his two-year stint with RGB. Yeah, I think we and need to get the and, and I remember this pretty well because uh, I, I had mentioned uh, during that time span that there was this gentleman who whose name I will keep restricted who also happens to be something of a media member um, about – he had made some points that uh, – that the Toros wouldn't count with Kyle Adams or Isidro Martinez when the team was Vegas uh, last season. And this was the game at Vegas uh, after the Open uh, Cup game, mm -hmm. if I can recall. And I didn't, I didn't want to poke a feud with him, with this person. But wh when I saw like his little bulletin board material... Uh, I had to go on record and and set everything straight for the guy, and this was a person that didn't that didn't know like how to cover the team at, at the time. Now you go back to Chuy Enriquez. Um, he he's not the only one to have uh, suffered the same faith as uh, as some of the other former Toro players, you know. And, and it's kind of sad that this relationship, it's not fully functioning the way it, it should be. Uh, and, and and that's just the, the, the disappointing thing, is that we only get to see the, the dynamo players that need minutes, not even 24 hours prior to the game. It's just like, here you go. They'll slide into your lineup and 10, 11 people you were working with throughout the week. Correct. And that's kind of hard to build chemistry uh, to build upon. <laughs> but will we see it changed? Probably not. I mean, Ray, it's, it's true. I, you, you, you don't know. You don't know. I mean, I mean, have you seen the way Tab Rammels works? I mean, can, can, I, can you yeah, really see that on record? Have you, have you seen the way... I mean, yes, Matt Jordan remains the same, um, the same constant uh, variable. But uh, can you really say the same thing about uh, um, about Tab Ramos? I mean, like, come on, yeah. give, give, give. I mean, yeah. I'm going to give more the benefit of about uh, of the doubt to to Tab Ramos than what I am Matt Jordan, mm -hmm. because I. I <laughs> I think at the end of the day, Jordan is just looking out for the Dynamo than what he is the Toros at, at this point. Which at I mean, of, they're just which using. At the end of the day, you know, you w we understand because I mean, at the end, who's who's paying who's paying him? The Houston Dynamo. So his exactly. priority is going to be the Dynamo. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but also to go back to this whole thing, yes, of course. I do agree Tad Ramos works differently, but I think the main key 
to focus on here still is how are you, how is Tab supposed to get around? Well, the final word of Matt Jordan, I believe Matt Jordan has the final say on most of these things. It just is the way that it feels. And also we're forgetting one big person and that's Chris Kennedy. I think it also can all go back to Chris Kennedy and the way that Chris Kennedy works with Matt Jordan. And then of course we, yes, say that Tab Ramos works differently, but that's the problem. If Tab Ramos, let's say, says, I want my players in that I want to send down to RGVFC at least a couple of days prior to the match, say maybe a Thursday instead of, I don't know, a Friday night. So let's say Thursday morning, as in they get, they take the early flight into, let's say we're high on the money scale, flying in or whatever. Point being, I guess I'm saying he wants his, he wants the players in a couple of days or I bet you Matt and Jordan kind of will undermine that and just send them the Friday night. It's just, I believe that Matt Jordan is a problem. I'm not saying tab is a problem for sure because tab Ramos, I do hope to see some difference in this, in, our, in the way that he works with RGBFC. The only problem is, I think it's Matt Jordan. I mean, suppose that you are right. Jordan is the constant uh, denominator here. I mean, at, 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 some, at some point in the world of soccer, and some things have not been working. You have got to find a way to bring in the change. And I think Tab Ramos would emulate that type of change because of his success with the uh, youth with the youth programs. And I apologize for my home phone ringing, but uh, I'm not answering to scammers. But uh, anyhow, the the. The thing that that one want, uh, the point that I want to make here is, okay, with Tab Ramos at the helm, I think there's go- I think there's going to be a lot more uh, fluidity with this relationship just moving forward, and I think that's going to be the, the the key emphasis here. There's got to be a fluidity both ways. And I think that's one of the things that uh, Tab Ramos has kind of mentioned with Glenn Davis consistently. He wants to treat all portions of the pipeline, the academy, Brazos Valley Cavalry, um, the, the Toros, and the Dynamo, but more specifically Toros and Dynamo. He wants to treat them as if they were just one big team. Kind of to the point is that you're trying to make is – kind of help increase that fluidity of movement between players of both teams. Uh, I'm not sure, like I said, I'm not sure the specifics of how he's trying to achieve that, if it's feasibly possible, whether it's uh, financial-wise or, you know, travel-wise, if that's feasibly possible. But Tab Ramos has been vocal about having ideas of what to change or what can change uh, when it comes to this relationship between RGV and the uh, Houston Dynamo on the pitch, when it comes with things on the pitch. When it comes with what Matt Jordan's expertise is when it comes to actually building a roster, that's where things start going a lot more haywire season to season. Always have to continuously rebuild because of Matt Jordan's two to three year plan. Although you although correct me if I'm wrong, Ray, you mentioned something about USL contracts having a maximum of two years. Um by Yes. The fir- the first year is being the the first year between mutual club and the second year is mutually uh, club exclusive where it is up to the club whether they want to come back or not in this case being the the dynamo being the club that says yay or or nay mm-hmm. 
that that's the uh, that's kind of the the way it works, it, at, at least here with with RGVFC. I mean, Dynamo have the final say. You're you're good for another year, or you're not coming back. So, because of this, do you think that maybe the USL at this moment, when it comes to contracts, tends to be a lot more short term than long term? That we yes, and 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 not only that, but just remember that um, any player that they um, that they sell out, um, for example, the Dynamo. They don't have to pay a transfer fee to the Toro because it doesn't want to um, give them any type of incentive to any lower teams to sign better players, hence the Dynamo. And thus it creates more competition for MLS teams trying to sign uh, good amateur players. It's kind of short-sighted but in part it kind of remains a very myopic for the MLS uh, system so it would actually be interesting to see if the MLS were to prioritize youth scouting to maximize the plan but otherwise it I mean y- 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 were, the Dynamo may, may never get anywhere because it, if, if that's what the Dynamo are trying to do without having to invest much, then uh, I, I would probably say golf clap to Matt Jordan at this point. But uh, but at the way that it's, that it's functioning, it, it, it's not working because you only had one player, as Charlie Ward uh, mentioned. Only when everyone else, it's like, you know, thanks for coming type of thing. So... Jacob, let's go ahead and listen to your thoughts on it first before I. I mean, what more do you want for sure? It's just hopefully that Tab Ramos, it, it is true that he wants to work with as it has a big team, but I said it before, I really just think it's just. Matt Jordan being the problem, being this person that just does not necessarily want to move the team forward, at least RG VFC. We've seen finally maybe glimpses of hope that Tab Ramos is going to be the difference and we can hit alt tab on our keyboards right now and say, let's go. <laughs> but it's just, I mean, only time will tell, I guess. And of course it, as always, takes years and years to make an academy, but when you've had over four years already to really develop someone, have we had someone necessarily developed? No. The point going again, Eric Bird gets signed by someone else instead of staying with an MLS team because they didn't apparently want him, even though, of course, well, he deserves it. So it's just... It's just a tough situation. I don't know. Like to me, like it seems that we fall into this thing of the Dynamo kind of taking it, the money pinching kind of way, like they usually done. Not not only with us, but also with the first team. Um, I think that Tab Ramos is going to bring in some changes. Is it too little too late to mend uh, relations between RGV fans and Dynamo as an organization or Dynamo fans as well? We don't know just yet. Um, we'd have to, like you said, uh, Jacob, you know, this is a long term uh, change kind of thing. But if the, if the league itself operates in a more short, short term, uh, basis, then I sense some sort of incompatibility with uh, with uh, visions on mm-hmm. the future uh, of this club between our fans, Dynamo fans, 
RGB organization and Dynamo organization. It's a complete cluster F, so I don't say the, the actual word, but it's a complete confusion at this point. And the fact that Matt Jordan tends to shy away from being more, uh, from explaining his idea instead of using his typical catchphrase of core values and uh, identity, then I think it'd be a lot more easier to kind of understand what the vision of the Dynamo Half for the Toros is uh, rather than kind of just assuming everything all the time. And it yeah. doesn't help when I don't think that even the Dynamo have an idea of what vision or what direction they want to take the Toros with. You know, do they want for it to be competitive? It sure doesn't seem that way because every two years or every year we're rebuilding the roster. Do they want us to develop? It sure doesn't seem that way because how many of our players have actually been given opportunities or actually grown to be MLS starters? Just Memo. And Kevin Garcia, but that came with a lot of backlash. But other than that, like, has this team been successful in the Dynamo point of view? It hasn't. But we can't put the blame on RGV. We have to put the blame on the Houston Dynamo because at the end of the day, who controls the technical aspects? The Houston Dynamo does. Yep. So Matt or Tab Ramos has a huge huge amount of work not only for the first team but also for the Houston or for the Toros to try to clean up this mess that Wilmer Cabrera left uh, uh, after he was fired and Jerson Echeverry also has to clean up this mess but he can only do so much with whatever the Dynamo decides to give him and if the Dynamo decides to take away his best players in the middle of the season then that really isn't helping much I hope you guys are understanding, you know, the point that I'm trying to make. Look, I'm not mm -hmm. trying, and I don't think it neither, neither is Jacob or neither Ray or Cesar. We're not trying to completely bash the Dynamo organization to the, uh, you know, I want to see the other side of it, you know, and kind of get a better view. But you start seeing all these comments by former players, speci specifically Charlie and Chewy that dared themselves to go on record on these kind of, uh, uh, I guess the term is accusations. And the way that they've handled this, it just puts you to think like, wow. And the fact that the, that Matt Jordan and, you know, have been really quiet about all of, all, all of this, like in explaining what their, his core values are, it doesn't make it any better. The lack of transparency is causing all of this conspiracy theories to come up. Whether it's actually true or not, at this point, nobody knows. We can only assume based on what we can actually see. But when it's former players that are more transparent in, uh, about this, then of course the, the public opinion is gonna sway to the player side. You guys understand what I'm trying to get here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because y because y you haven't heard exactly the other side of the story Correct. when you already have two players, nearly almost three mm -hmm. with Todd Wharton, mm -hmm. uh, which I I mean, I could I could have dived into the question, but I think the way his interview sounded, it was uh, the tone just uh, gave it away. And, you know, the fact that, uh, hold on, the fact that Charlie Ward explicitly mentions Wilmer and Matt Jordan, I mean, it's got, you've got to have facts to, ba if you're going to make those kind of call-outs, you have to have the facts to back it up. You can't just say names willy-nilly and say, oh, is it because, I don't have the facts to back it up. It's just what I think. Something that I am guilty of, so ex uh, I'm sorry about that. Um, but 
he dares himself, you know, he dared to call them out directly in this in this video from two years ago. Is it my is it my audio that's too low, uh, guys? Um, all right. I can hear you clearly. Okay. Same. Okay. This is. I think uh, they were saying uh, in the in the chat that uh, it was uh, it, audio was too low. Uh, but yeah, you know that's that's my that's my way uh, that's my way of thinking about this more in the level head. Now yeah. your audio is going in and out, my friend. Yeah. I'm moving the uh, I'm moving the uh, the le the level. That's why. Here, I'm, I might make sure. I'm trying to find that s that sweet spot because I know a little bit uh, a little while back it was kind of peaking into the red. So I really don't want that either. Um, but yeah, that's my way. Now in that days have passed, well, a day has passed since the uh, the Carson uh, interview with Shui uh, was released, since we released the, the video. Thank you, Ray, for... Uh, you know, that's all, you know, that that may have been just like print side. Thankfully, there's now a video of of the uh, Charlie Ward interview. Don't know about that one, but uh, okay, I'll take it. What do you mean? Uh, uh, yeah, like now that you have a printed article by uh, Carson Merck, and then there's my video mm -hmm. too. Uh, that 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 there's two players now involved in this, and quite possibly a third if you want to include. Uh, Todd Wharton, like I mentioned earlier. Yeah, that's that is true. He did. He wasn't very direct about it, but he kind of in between the lines kind of mentioned something about uh, the way he felt um, being with the within the organization. So it's t potentially three players that have similar uh, thoughts on how the organization is being run. It cannot be just a coincidence, like some people are trying to make it out to be. They're the minority, but I have seen some comments uh, saying that, hey, it's just, right now it's just two people out of how many players? But yeah, those two those two players have been more, ha were the ones that are being vocal. How many others that we don't know have similar views, but are too afraid, or they decide, okay, I left that already, it doesn't even matter what I think about them anymore, so I'm not gonna say anything about it. But the fact that both of the players that, dis that actually went out and said something about it in public, uh, whether written or audiovisual, they were the team's fan favorites, Charlie Ward and Chuy Enriquez. That has to say something. And the fact that they specifically mentioned, I left with good terms from RGV's organization. I still respect them. I love this team. Whether Chuy or Charlie Ward said that both of them kind of said some sort of a statement similar to that. So they appreciate, they respect, they love the Toros, but the same cannot be said about the Dynamo organization. So yep. something needs to be done uh, internally. Now, how much of that is Wilmer's fault? I'm not sure. Remember that Wilmer Cabrera had the uh, the reputation of not being a players uh, well. guy, a players coach. Uh, being uh, a player that players would not do not want to uh, be coached under, so will we see some sort of change from here on out with Tab Ramos? We don't know for sure. All you can do is hope. But what I will say is that patience is running thin at RGV, and Dynamo fans may minimize it, whatever, because yes, we understand. Dynamo fans have their own priorities with their first team, which is a dumpster fire the way it's being run as well. Hmm, que novedad, it's the same organization, right? Um, but at the end of the day, right now, the Toros are part of the Dynamo organization, so it should matter how these up-and-coming players are being treated. Uh, and the fact is, with these players going out and thinking this, the reputation of the Dynamo is tainted, it's going to be a lot more harder to get domestic players to join the Dynamo slash Taurus. So at the end of the day, it's, it's nothing more than public relations, but 
it's a very important aspect nonetheless. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'd agree for sure. Uh, it's, yeah, it, it's difficult. I mean, I would even say it's kind of for players too, besides that Todd Wharton kind of saying it, it's the same deal with, well, Eric Bird. Why haven't, why didn't they renew his contract? And it can go to show you, yes, we can speculate, we can do all this stuff, but at that same time, if we were to actually try and get a quote from Eric Bird, I bet you he would go on record and say the exact same thing. Yes, of course, we spoke to the most vocal players, for sure. But Eric Bird wasn't silent half the time, too. He gave some great interviews, if I do recall myself. So if we were to ask him, I bet you he would say that exact same thing. Remember... Now the dumpster fire story about Houston, well, it's the dumpster fire. It's going out just a tad because, of course, we have a tab now instead of an alt delete. We just have a tab, so it's going to be good. See, and I remember uh, you now you mentioned Eric Berg's interview. I remember Eric Berg specifically was very candid about the way that Dynamo players were being sent down uh, to mm -hmm. RGV. He mentioned, I, he mentioned in, remember that Reno game where it was played at 10 in the morning? Yes, where yes, he, I do recall he, that interview. He specifically mentioned that, hey, you know, we played at 10 in the morning. I barely got to the Valley last night, you know, and he kind of criticized, and I know, I don't know if it's a, in this channel or in race channel i'll have to double check but that video is out there if you guys want to see that that interview when i find it i'll post it on i'll post it on our twitter uh so you guys can watch it and you guys be the judge uh about that but yeah he did specifically mention that he is he was a uh, candidate as well so but the point we're trying to make is the reason we brought it up is it's one too many players complaining about that this needs to be fixed if if this relationship wants to make amends it needs to be fixed and if it takes this being brought to the public's attention for the organization to respond i mean we can't just brush this under the rug we did that for two years look where it brought us Yeah, I mean, can this relationship be so? I think there could be a lot of salvageable pieces. I really do think so. But time will be either an ally or foe, and it depends on how it's on how it's being used. That that's just my point of view on it. Ah. Uh. 100% agree on that. But the necessary parties have to make that commitment in order to change. And that includes us as fans, us as media, uh, for, for the Toros. We have to do our part in helping this organization make, make amends with each other. Because the other alternative is independence. And it's a tough pill to swallow, but at the end of the day, and I think that's what some Dynamo fans do not realize, is that RGBFC fans, for the most part, don't care about the Dynamo. Don't care. Don't care about what happens up here. Much like some Dynamo fans don't care about what happens down there. So their priority is RGB. Is RGB competitive? Is RGB winning? Is RGB making it to the playoffs? No, they're not. And of course they're going to be frustrated. And who's controlling that? Who's going to be the first one to blame? The Houston Dynamo. Why? Because they're controlling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I fully agree. I mean, uh, I just hope it doesn't end in a, in a messy uh, divorce, much like other situations that I've 
seen and gone through, but uh, I just I just hope that there's uh, something to amend out of all this. <sighs> Any uh, final thoughts on this topic before we move on? I mean, not for me, really, just, I mean, I said what I needed to say, got it all out. It's simple, needs to be fixed. But, of course, we'll, we see it fixed from how long it's been, hopefully, but I still see it staying the same. So, if push comes to shove, Jacob, uh, and this is my final question to you guys uh, before we move on. Yeah. If push comes to shove, and even with Tab Ramos, there is no clear improvement in the way the team is being managed. Would you support yep. in, uh, complete independence from the Dynamo? Yes, I, I would. If, of course, things don't even... If a slight change happens, I'd be more than thrilled. But if nothing happens, if no change happens this season with all that players being moved and what happens in the off season. Yeah. I'll 100% support, support independence. Once again, if we have to move to D one, we will, because let's face it, it's way too expensive to really just stay up in USL championship. It's dumb. We would have to get more money or whatever, but I mean, screw that. Who wants to go through that? Just go to division one, have a chance. And let's not forget, and going through with that, and I think I was, uh, I was mentioning this to a friend of mine, is actually to my parents and or to my family in Monterrey, uh, is that if the Toros drop down to D one, it's it's le it's less expensive uh, when it comes to like organizational costs, or, or at least to get a franchise, um, and it also with the uh, the fact that the USL is balancing the idea of bringing in pro rel to championship and league one you know it's a lot more I think it's a lot more feasible you know that the Toros get their groove as an independent team in league one pro rel is, in, uh, is uh, implemented and uh, they end up you know gaining a getting back to the USL championship on their own merits whereas with the dynamo if things continue this way and we're always fighting for bottom of the table you know now you, your pro rel comes along you're dropped down to league one but you're still being managed by the Houston dynamo so I mean that that's that's the way I see it I don't know what you, I don't know what you guys think um, but um, Ray your thoughts on the original question um my final thoughts I, I mean look rome wasn't built on the day but i'm pretty sure the relationship is salvageable and i think that tie between tab ramos and gerson i think it can help solidify that tie uh a lot i really do hope so so uh now with the question being, if things do not change under Tab Ramos, would you support independence? Yes or no? Definitely. I mean, it's it's homegrown soccer. Why not? It's something that uh, I, if I was able to support independent baseball for a number of years, uh, why not independent soccer? Okay. I like that. I like that. I like that. I like that. Uh that uh, response um people in the chat what do you guys think well we move on to the next uh, the next and final topic since we are nearing uh nine o'clock um so i believe today or it, wait is it today or yesterday no, yesterday they announced uh the, the league announced the home openers for this upcoming 2020 season Yep. And it was yesterday. I, and I just dropped my phone. So, Ray. And your uh, audio is coming on and off. Well, that's because I had to drop down to to get my phone from. Uh, 
so I, I got away from my mic. Um, now our home opener is Sunday, March 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 eighth. Sun Sunday mm -hmm. March eighth against. Refresh my memory. Los Dos. Los Dos. LA Galaxy. LA Galaxy. Very good, Jake. Uh, very good. <laughs> so, a team that we struggle to beat. We were close last season. But we haven't. Pero had... pasó la tragedia. Pero pasó la tragedia. Exactamente. It's a good matchup for sure. Mm. Honestly. But at this point, because of the way, the state of this roster, it's too early to call anything about exactly. it. Exactly. But it has the potential to be a really good match. It's a shame it had to be on a Sunday. But oh well. By the way, uh, that uh, the actual kickoff time has not been released yet. Now, supposedly tomorrow we should be getting the full schedule, the full 2020 schedule. Uh, of all the USL, so I I'm hoping that 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 schedule will actually have kickoff times uh, on there. So be sure to uh, be on the lookout for uh, on social media with the USL Championship when they when when they release uh, that information as well. But today they also revealed that the Toros will be on cable television in one match, and it's going to be September 27th. Uh, against uh, when they'll be visiting El Paso Locomotive and it'll be aired on ESPN Deportes so I more than likely it's going to be with Spanish commentary but it's how fun because I have YouTube TV I won't be able to even watch that on mute Ouch. <laughs> yeah no joke it's very Sad, but oh well. I guess I'll have to figure it out somehow. Do your own commentary. <laughs> like, I mean, hopefully it's at home. No, it's gonna be a. Uh, it's gonna be away. Mm. Well, then yes. I guess ESPN Plus, maybe. It's part of Copa Texas. Part of Copa Texas. Texas Cup or Cup Texas, if you want to say it like that. Well, I yep. mean, just, just also. Starting off with the, you know, LA Galaxy 2 match. First, we have to see how this team's going to play against Houston. We'll have to see how this team's going to play probably against Austin Bull once again during the preseason and probably against San Antonio FC during the preseason. If I had to guess, we'll play those teams once again during the preseason and just figure out how this team could be. Now, of course, this team could be scoring goals and we could see us not score goals in this first home opener or whatever because it is very possible. I think what will happen, though, is, well, this team will just will be there, and it will probably be another draw. But I think this team, when we play LA Galaxy 2 again, this time on the road, I think will be fantastic, and we'll get a victory up there because we were very close, and I think we'll see more road victories this season, which is crazy to think because we haven't seen how this team plays. But I think Ben Willis also a big factor is up to the test to save some more amazing shots. We've already seen what he's capable of from last mm -hmm. year. So I think this team will be ready to maybe show up against LA Galaxy the first game. But I still see uh, maybe a nil-nil or a 1-1 one -one draw or something like that. But of course, a long ways away from playing. We'll just have to see how they do against Houston, how they do against, I mean, of course, you can only show a little bit of light against an MLS team. You're supposed to lose those nine times out of 10. But my point also being just how will we face versus San Antonio FC in the uh, preseason game as we always play them or, of course, Austin Bull in a preseason match. Um, you know, it, it may be the earliest uh, we've got two games uh, confirmed against Los Dos and little history here. This isn't the first time we host Los Dos. The uh, home opener, you'd have to go back to the uh, the uh, into the inaugural season when we hosted them over at the UTRGV 
track and field and soccer complex. Yeah. Um, I was there for that game, and uh, mm-hmm. if, if I can recall, Ari lacked one of the goals. And I want to say the other one was by the Eng- the Englishman um, who's now with the Colorado, uh, the Rapids organization. His name just uh, just escapes. Uh, his name just es- I have it there, but uh, I I remember that game very vividly. And then the, the one on ESPN Deportes. Uh, it's going to be late in the season when the team has to go to El Paso. And by then, um, either A, we're still in contention with, uh, with the playoff spot, or B, just playing spoiler. Agreed. Agreed. So, do you guys have any any other uh, topics you guys want to bring up before we call it a night? I'll just no, give you my final. Uh, yeah, no, I, I'll just give you my final thoughts of the day. This has been a crazy just start of the week for news of soccer in general. Uh, just recently today, my USL or USL, wow, my NWSL team, the Portland Thorns, decided to break news like crazy today. They decided to re, and this is true. They decided to trade. And this is going to turn out bad. I already have a feeling. Emily Sonnet for a number one draft pick to the Orlando Pride. Good for Orlando Pride. They might have a chance now. And then, of course, they decided to basically revamp their whole roster. But Topin Heath will still be there with Lindsay Horan. And, well, they call her Harry, the other player, just like Harry Potter. But either way should be a good season for NWSL as well. As, of course, another big news is, well, with that for Houston Dash, they decided to trade J.J. Watt's fiance. So that is very interesting. I believe it's Ohio that they K- traded. K- so Ohio. everything Say can just name. be crazy. Say her name. But anyway, uh, oh, also did important Thorns release Andresinha? <laughs> Like I said, they re- they just revamped their <laughs> roster. She's my she's my favorite player when she was here at the Dash, um, but um, but yeah, some interesting movements. Uh, the Dash also have brought have made a couple of, of movements. Like I said, they brought in a, a defender for Kaylee Ohio from uh, Chicago Red Stars. I don't have that information uh, at this moment. She kind of caught me off guard with that. And then today they also announced a new acqui- a new acquisition. Uh, this time a, a, a striker or a forward uh, for for the Houston Dash as well. So is it going to be enough to see the Dash um, in playoffs for the first time in their uh, club's history? We don't know just yet. Uh, they also did also they also did renew. Uh, um, um, oh my God, what is going on? Rachel Daly. They also did renew Rachel Daly. So that's good uh, for for the Houston Dash. And and along the topics of uh, of women's soccer, uh, I just re- uh, I received official word this morning that uh, yours truly uh, here at South Texas Border Sports will be cut women's Olympic qualifier from each be part. I will have uh, full blown coverage of that event. And I still haven't received confirmation yet, but I am, I am planning on covering the Houston games with uh, the U.S. women's national team in the CONCACAF qualifying. So look for that collaboration between South Texas Board Sports and Down in the Valley for the women's CONCACAF Olympic uh, qualifiers uh, as well. Yeah, and I guess while we're breaking news, uh, I got my first soccer games to cover tomorrow for La Jolla tournament, okay. uh, ladies soccer. It's going to be the first tournament, why not do it there? Very close to my home, about 30 minutes. And then, of course, Rio Sports Live also going to create a magazine with everything, so I'll be a writer there. And nice. following it up, because why, why not just say this as well, 60 days and Formula 4 will release uh, the link to go apply for the media credentials at Circuit of the Americas for their opener in June 5th 
through the seventh. Of course, they'll go back during F1 weekend later that year. So yes, big 2020 for me, big 2020 for Ray, big 2020 for Edson. I'm very excited for all of us. Yeah. It, and you lot- sh- shaving that neck beard too. Oh. <laughs> oh, by the way, don't forget to check out uh, Tip of Texas Sports Network. That's Jacob's baby right there. Uh, Tip of Texas Sports Network. He's had a lot of very interesting uh, interviews uh, in the racing world, if I'm not mistaken. Right, Jacob? Yes, racing world for sure. All Formula 4 drivers going to have one more at the end of this month. And maybe we'll change it up with a music interview as well as one of the racers is also a drummer for a band. It's a kind of heavy metal-ish punk rock basically band. And so that might be interesting because I'll get to interview the lead singer as well. So yes, very, a lot of big plans for 2020 is all I got to say. And also let's not forget if you guys missed that announcement in, uh, on New Year's uh, Eve, because everybody, uh, was planning their their New Year's night or were partying at that moment. Uh, we do have a new uh, a new writer for uh, ditvpodcast.com. Uh, dot com. Uh, her name is Alejandra Veras, and she will be the correspondent uh, for Houston Dynamo stories uh, in our website. So be sure to to ch- uh, ch- uh, follow her on social media at Alejandra Sports and welcome her to to the family. Uh, like like Jacob said. We are planning on making 2020 a lot uh, bigger for us, not only in in our individual projects, whether it's down in the valley, South South Texas uh, Border Sports, uh, Tip of Texas Sport Network, but uh, uh, also in collaboration of all these in in these uh, these uh, lost the word I had on the tip of my tongue, and these projects working together uh, as one unit to continue to bring coverage to local uh, uh, soccer and of course and anything uh, plus that of that is of really uh, of good importance for the people in the Rio Grande Valley and we also want to thank you all support uh, for those of us who watched these uh, almost two hours uh, of the show thank you guys I know it's been a while I know we you know we've been kind of off the grid since the end of the season uh, but we're back I'm not going to say that we're going to be going back weekly uh, until there, unless there's like more news in the next couple of days. But do expect at least one more show for the rest of January. Because remember, we have to fill in a roster before February 8th, which is when uh, around the days when preseason is going to start. And Edson, also keep this in mind. I mean, February 8th, may not mean that the team may have a full roster Correct. as we experienced last season. I mean, uh, we only had a handful of, of, of signings uh, prior to official kickoff and and official uh, rosters being named out. Correct, but we're going to have at least a couple of uh, try, uh, people or players that are trying out to earn that official USL contract. Like it, like it, yeah, uh, there's going to be a handful full of trial lists. Correct. That's for sure. Correct. Uh, but at least we're going to have a general idea of what direction Jason Echeverry and Tab Bamos want to take tactics-wise uh, for the Toros in this upco- upcoming season. But I really am glad that at least the Dynamo versus RGV game was going to be back in uh, at, at, at RGV. At ATV Park. Mm-hmm. So... Having said all of this, I know, Jacob, you gave your final thoughts uh, already. Ray, final thoughts? Well, I mean, let's just hope that this uh, continues uh, growing uh, for the Toros, and hopefully that there's going to be some uh, something good out of this. And now uh, I, I will confirm this as well, that UTR, GV, and the Toros will be against each other. Uh, time and dates to be confirmed. Uh, okay. I have, I, I've, I've been told this by a good source that they, they will be playing each other once again, uh, t- uh, time and location to be confirmed though. So, uh, another, another thing to be, to be on the lookout for, uh, for this upcoming 2020 season. So guys, uh, thank you all for tuning in tonight. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Jacob and Ray. 
for coming on, on tonight, almost at the, la at the last minute. Um, but really appreciate all of you, the work that you, that you guys do for, for, for down in the valley. It's very well noted. Um, I also want to thank, obviously, uh, Natural Beauty Spa for their, for their support. Uh, in at least promoting, you know, th this podcast uh, with uh, their clients. Uh, let's not forget, you know, obviously any kind of promotion helps. Uh, as so, Natural Beauty Spa, which is my mom's uh, spa b business, helps us out in that in that regard. Really appreciated uh, of that. Um, so, if you guys are looking for a place to get a facial. Uh, or at least to find, you know, to fix or maintain your your skin. Be sure to, to check out Natural Beauty Spa. Uh, follow them uh, on Instagram. Uh, they have uh, some uh, some specials uh, going on. Uh, they do do business not only in the Rio Grande Valley but also in San Antonio at certain times. So, Chuy, if you're listening to this. You don't have any excuse to miss your facials, okay? Just because you went to San Antonio doesn't mean you're not going to do facials anymore. Um, but yes, be sure to check, be sure to check them out um, and help them grow just like they're trying to help us grow as well and how you're helping us grow as well. Um, like I said, I don't know when we're going to have an, uh, another show. It's going to depend on what kind of news is brought in. So tomorrow, be sure uh, to be on the lookout for the full release of the schedule, uh, as well as uh, preseason and any other uh, potential uh, signings that will, that will be made uh, for the roster. Uh, Ray, be sure to follow him on Twitter, at, South, at STX Border Sports. On, uh, Thank you. On, uh, obviously on YouTube, South Texas Border Sports, where you'll find – uh, the the press conferences, post game interviews, uh, practice interviews uh, on his channel. Um, he's also on Instagram so at South Texas Border Sports and Facebook South Texas Border Sports as well. Uh, be sure to also support Jacob. He has Tip of Texas Sports Network on uh, YouTube, as well as the Overreacted Gamer. I believe I said that right. Correct. Yes on twitch so be sure to uh be sure to uh subscribe or follow him uh on twitch to for his uh for his in his gaming channel uh follow him at um, instagram at jacob young 99 on twitter at jacob at jacob young 456 uh and as well as for myself be sure to don't follow me actually don't follow me on twitter at eochoa underscore eight and much less, don't follow me uh, on Instagram at uh, eochoadiTV8. Um, also, be sure to check out my articles, uh, not only at ditvpodcast.com, but also with mentefutbolera.com uh, in Spanish. Be sure, let's help uh, support each other, and let's continue to make uh, the coverage of the Toros grow as much as possible. So... Thank you guys for your support. Be sure uh, to also don't forget to be on the lookout when this podcast comes out on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and of course the video the video archive uh, here here on YouTube. Uh, well, I want to thank J uh, Justin Finger for his help uh, with with uh, getting those audio podcasts uh, done as well. Having said all of this, and because I'm getting really thirsty. Thank you all so much. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.